Hey, BookTube, it's Peg. I'm back at the History Shelf for Liberty Fund Book Haul Part 2. Are you guys as pumped as I am or what? That first video just had my, my blood pumping, my juices flowing. So, first video, we covered the uh, six-volume set of David Hume's History of England, and then the eight-volume Glasgow edition. Yeah, the Glasgow edition of the um, Lectures and Correspondence of um, Adam Smith. Um, so showed those off and now I'm going to show you um, two of my other orders that were smaller but um, no less important in many ways. Um, this is another set. Uh, maybe I should have included it in the other video but didn't want to run too long. So let me just show first and then I'll, I'll talk to you why I got this. This is a three volume set in paperback of the uh, collected writings or selected writings of Lord Acton. Um, and they are all edited by J. Rufus Fierce. Um, the, uh, the first book we have here, The Green, is the Essays in the Study and Writing of History. And there's the gentleman there. Then we have, oh, this is a very thick book. This is his Essays in Religion, Politics, and Morality. Very sturdily printed. And then finally, an older gentleman here, we have his Essays in the History of Liberty. Now, I came to this because, well, we've all heard of Lord Acton. Um, he was a politician, what, 19th century English politician, historian, um, he was famous for uh, many, many famous phrases, um, as, as they describe on the Lord Acton Institute website, he was one of the most learned Englishmen of his time. Uh, but his, his great abiding passion was political liberty. And uh, so he wrote about, he wrote history, but with a focus on the importance of being able to be free in a society um, and to be an active citizen. And J. Rufus Fears is one of my favorite, he passed away <clears throat> a few years ago, but one of my favorite lecturers on the great courses. So that is how I heard about Lord Acton. Well, I knew about him generally, but when I was listening to some of the history courses that J. Rufus Fears um, was giving for the great courses, um, in the introduction to who your instructor who your instructor is, they would talk about how J. Rufus Fears um, edited and worked on all of the select you know select writings of Lord Acton, and he would mention sometimes in his lectures whether he was talking on the ancient Greeks or Romans, but especially then when he was talking about forms of government that how important um, his study of Lord Acton was. And he would quote from him uh, pretty uh, liberally. And so I was like, hmm, you know, I really enjoy this this instructor. And because uh, I thought, well, geez, he's he must have written a book on his own, you know, but uh, I know he, was, he edited all these things. And so each of these books has a wonderful um, introduction and preface uh, written by J. Rufus Fears. And uh, I decided, you know what, I want to get these because I really love J. Rufus Fears so much. And these are beautiful books, and some of the topics in here are just intriguing as heck. Let's start off with uh, this one right here, the Essays in the Study and Writing of History. Uh, so, for instance, we'll have, and by the way, it's beautiful, you know, again, just great quality printing by uh, Liberty Fund Books, opens nicely, and the covers is not too thick, not too thin, has a very sturdy quality to it. Um, oh, this is volume two. Okay, this, cause they don't really say on the outside which volume it is, so let me, this is volume two. Okay, so volume one is the Essays in the History of Liberty, the red one. Okay, 
and we'll just take a look at some of the things that are written about in here. Um, he wrote the history of freedom and Antiqu Ant antiquity, section one, the history of liberty. Um, he's got some reviews, uh, book reviews that he wrote during his time. Um, section two is on the Anglo-American tradition of liberty. Some very interesting essays. Um, he's got an essay on the Puritan Revolution. Oh, this is fabulous. The Rise of the Whigs, the English Revolution. Um, political Causes of the American Revolution. And he even has one on reports on the Civil War in America, which, as a Civil War buff, I'm really, really looking forward to reading that one. It's dated March 1861. The North American Union hyphenated. <laughs> um, fabulous. And that one goes on for a while. Uh, it's got Acton and Lee correspondence. Whoa. Oh, wow. That's the same Lee. Wow. General, uh, Mrs. General Robert E. Lee actually wrote. They, they exchanged letters. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea. Sorry, guys. Oh, I can never get this right. He's writing to, uh, yeah, Mary Custis Lee. Oh, this will be interesting. Um, he has more, some more reviews, reports on current events, nationality. Um, section 3 is liberty in the modern nation state. So these are all his collected writings um, on, the, on the history of liberty. This is fabulous. So that's volume 1. Okay, so then we move into volume two, which is essays and the study and writing of history. Uh, let's see. And this one consists, it looks mostly of reviews at the time. Let me see if you guys can see these things here. The Borgias and their latest historian. What is that one? We've got Wolsey and the Divorce of Henry uh, VIII. Um, review of Carlyle's um, Friedrich II. Mr. Goldwyn Smith's Irish History. The Protestant Theory of Persecution. Secret History of Charles II. Um, German Schools of History. Uh, this is just the stuff I, I just eat up. I love it. I, I can't I can't describe or tell you why I do, but I think many of you out there who have that same type of uh, strange longing to just lose yourself in another time and in someone else's mind as they go through these things, you know. Um, I love it. Just it's, it's it just transports you. The massacre of Saint Bar Saint Bartholomew. That was beautifully said. Oh, thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, review of Leia's History of the Inquisition. Um, so there's some more correspondence in here. Not with uh, Mrs. Lee. <laughs> that was odd. <laughs> I'm like, what is Robert E. Lee's wife doing in this book? Um, he talks about Tally Rand's memoirs. So just a jewel. Uh, if you just love the... Um, the, not not just the grand, but the the quotidian of history. Um, this is just a, a treasure trove of things you can get lost in, and the footnotes, and just you'll discover more that you're gonna want to read and learn. So, look out! <laughs> more books. No. Um, and then volume three of this set is essays in religion, politics, and morality. This looks like it's the biggest one of the three. Um, wow, this looks, oh. and then again, you know, J. Rufus Fears, each, each book, he, um, he, he writes an, uh, a beginning that says the essays in this volume, and he breaks them down, um, and touches on each one, and, uh, kind of gives, gives, gives an introduction of sorts, and some, some contextual notes, um, and yeah. This is what I uh, this is what I love is that the 
you know, these volumes, the purpose of these editions is to make Acton more accessible to scholars and to the broader public. Um, yeah, I love that. And it should be. So some of the essays in here, oh, this is interesting, because uh, Lord Acton was uh, English Catholic. I did not know that. Um, this section is on essays and liberal Catholicism. And uh, he writes about the Catholic press. Pol political thoughts on the church, um, Dollinger and on the temporal power, the Catholic Academy. Uh, ooh, this one's interesting. He writes about Cardinal Wiseman. He writes about Ultramontanism. I don't know what that is. I'm going to look that one up. Conflicts with Rome. And then there's a second section, uh, Acton and the Vatican Council. So that's interesting. He, um, the Pope and the Council, the Vatican Council, that's on page 290. Oh, this is fascinating. So that's section two. Section three um, is his perspectives on history, religion, and morality, which cover such things as human sacrifice. Uh, Buckles, Philosophy of History, and Review of Crosses, George Eliot's Life. Section four is a s selections from the Acton Legacy. So um, these are just like one or two word descriptions like liberty, conscience, uh, the state, power, antiquity, the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, Machiavelli, Whigs, Burke. Um, they, there's all, see, socialism, politics, uh, public opinion, military service and uh, Prussia and Germany, and uh, just different different topics, and they look like they are just, um, let me give you an example. I guess like these are like little blurbs, I guess you'd call these. I'm like, I'm sorry, let me just, I'm trying to describe this to you. Selections from the Act, uh, Selections from the Act and Legacy. So, say on, uh, okay, it looks like it cross-references you to other, to other parts of the book, like here's wigs. Okay, so, um, there's something on conscience. So it's beautiful. Three volumes. Of just fantastic writing, food for thought, the great minds who have come before, talking about history, talking about philosophy, morality, virtue, beauty, liberty. Beautiful, and I just love the set, and it's uh, it's paperback, and it's gorgeous. Okay, so the next two books I picked up. Um, I had, I had heard about this guy very, I have not read his works of history. Um, I know he wrote this civilization in Renaissance Italy. Um, and at first I mispronounced his first name, but uh, John David corrected me by, um, well, he didn't correct me, but he said it the right way. And then I was like, oh, I didn't say it the right way. Jakob Burkhardt was a very famous Swiss historian. Let me see if I can pull up a little information on him. Yeah, Swiss historian of culture and art um, and historiography. And apparently some of his writings were pretty um, uh, controversial at the time. And you know me, I love a good controversy. Uh, so I picked up, again, um, the prices at Liberty Fund are insanely affordable. So, I mean, for the Lord Acton set, I think it was $30 for all three. Now, just for single volumes, you're looking at 12, maybe $14.50. So the first one I got um, is Jakob Burkhardt's Judgments on History and Historians. And this has a very sturdy, this is almost like thick cardboard. You hear that? <laughs> it's very, it's a very, it doesn't, it doesn't like curve. It doesn't, you can't just bend this backwards. Not that I would ever do that. Um, and this one, I was reading a little bit to try to give you a, a sense of 
what this one, and here is the gentleman right here. This is Jakob Burkhart. Um, this guy right here, he was a little bit countercultural at the time, at least. I let's see. Um, I love the foreword. It says, uh, "Readers should beware. This is a profoundly countercultural book, unabashedly and defiantly so." It takes on the prevailing truisms of our time across the entire political spectrum. The goodness of popular egalitarian democracy, the superiority of untrammeled capitalism and its consumerist materialistic ethos, and the benefits of a welfare state that paternally provides for all. Jakob Burkhardt, uh, 1818 to 1897, um, also strenuously challenged the notion already whispered in his time and held even more tenaciously today that the essence of history for the past 400 years has been the march of progress and enlightenment. Uh, in this book, composed of notes and manuscript fragments for lectures he delivered at the University of Basel between 1865 and 1885, Burkhart carried on the debate against the numerous historians and commentators from Voltaire onward who insisted on judging the past against the standards of rationalism and liberalism that arose in the 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, while Burkhart disagreed on many things with his former mentor, Leopold von Ranke, he shared Ranke's view that, quote, every generation is equidistant from God, end quote. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what kind of uh, article titles he... He has an essay on uh, antiquity, ancient history and its scope, and he goes into the Middle Ages. Um talks about, breaks it down into a little, um, interesting the way you can just sit down and read like a little page or two and they, they're broken out into, let me, let me go over here, like here's the Middle Ages, right, just chapter two. You go on a couple pages and then he'll break it down into different topics within. Um, the spread of Nicene Christianity there. We have the church there. Go a little further. And you've got uh, Muhammad as the founder of a religion and Islam. I think I just saw, yeah, Charlemagne. So that's, that's awesome. It's going to be a really fun way to read this. Uh, then he's got a section of history from 1450 to 1598. Uh, history of the 17th and 18th centuries. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much where we end up there, and then the Age of Revolution. So, um, it's a slim volume, I'd say about 275 pages, uh, $12, I think, either that or $14.50, but, so along with that, you know, I, I love letters, and you saw that I have the correspondence, um, got some correspondence in the Lord Acton books, and then also from the, uh, Adam Smith, um, set that I bought. And so I thought as a nice companion piece, I would also pick up the letters of Jakob Burkhardt. Okay. There's a description on the back. Another nice, sturdy cover. Like I said, it's, you can't, it's, it's made to last. These books are just, and they smell very nice indeed. Uh, nice forward. I'm not sure who writes the forward here. Um, you have the letters. I'm just going to learn a lot about Jakob, you know, it's all about Jakob. <laughs> um, I've been on a, I've been on a, like a, a, a kick lately of reading older, way older historians, dead, you know, <laughs> way dead historians. <laughs> um, I, you know, I read a lot of current historians, <clears throat> current new releases and history, but I'm rediscovering the joy of reading, uh, writing that is, um, just very much of a certain time and place. And uh, Liberty Fund, these books have been a wonderful um, find, just so exciting. And uh, I just love, I love reading this older writing. It's just, it's just beautiful. Um, it's just so refreshing. Uh, let's see, so the letters of Jacob Burkhart. I'll just read you a real quick thing here. Um, 
Jakob Burkhardt's correspondence of, is of primary interest to students of history because of the very nature of the man and his major writings. And Burkhardt was a remarkably private man who believed that contemplation was the key to insight into the nature of man and of history. His approach to the study of history was re reflective rather than either systematic or dogmatic. In his letters, he mused on the consequences that he believed awaited a Europe that had given itself over almost wholly to a rationalistic and materialistic view of history and destiny. Thanks, Gidget. Is that what you feel about it? She did it again. Yeah, she, uh, she'll play when I start talking about these books. So that's Jakob Burkhart. Gidget? Yeah, you agree with Jakob? No. Maybe she needs dinner. Who knows? Maybe I need dinner. All right. So finally, guys, we'll have to wrap this up so we can feed the hungry masses. <laughs> On a whim, I decided... <laughs> After talking with uh, another booktuber, John David, the two uh, possibly take a look at this this book, which I had purchased a very cheap five dollar pocket book, pocket size edition of this book, and it's dense and it's crazy. And I had first heard about it from David Murphy's channel, so thank you, David. And now I think we're going to try to do a read along uh, <laughs> of sorts. Um, this summer, so possibly June, I think. Although John wants me to read the first 50 pages and tell me if I still want to do it. <laughs> and that is Lud Ludwig von Mises' Human Action, a Treatise on Economics, Volume 1. So, again, I had a pocket-sized edition with print that was just like, you know, crazy tiny, uh, about to give me just a headache even looking at it. And, uh, they had a four volume set on Liberty Fund for cheap. Um, some of these are, the other three are still wrapped in the plastic, but um, yeah. So these are more manageable, you know, they're, they're skinny. So I, I feel like I could tackle them and not some uh, 800,000 page little pocket sized edition, which was $5. So I'll just donate that to someone um, if they want it. <laughs> You know what's funny is I have another book by uh, Ludwig von Mises in this uh, in this Liberty Fund edition. Um, oh gosh, where is it? Is it? I think that's a Liberty. Fund. Yes, I do. I have his huge book uh, on socialism. <laughs> so this is actually going to make a nice, you know, set. I've got all. <laughs> <laughs> going the Austrian school over here um yeah I thought let's just really blow my mind this summer let's just do a crash course you know I uh just like taking a, a self-imposed separate undergraduate course in um, economics but human action I guess it is a treatise on economics but it's supposed to have more of a maybe a philosophical or oh well, let me just read this to you real quick. In Human Action, Mises explains complex market phenomena as, quote, the outcomes of countless conscious, purposive actions, choices, and preferences of individuals, each of whom was trying as best as he or she could, under the circumstances, to attain various wants and ends and to avoid undesired consequences, end quote. According to Bettina Bien Greaves in her foreword to this volume, these individual choices are the ultimate regulators of the market, determining supply and demand, prices, and in the end, profit and loss. Although governments can attempt to set prices, individual actions will have the final say through competitive bids for money and products and services. Thus, Mises presents economics as part of a larger science of human action, one that has discovered regularity in the sequence and interdependence of market phenomena. Uh, Mises defends the science against methodological criticisms from those in, quote, hard sciences and ideological criticisms from proponents of Marxism and socialism. He asserts that the tremendous progress in technology and the consequent increase in wealth and general wel welfare in the last two centuries are the direct result of liberal policies based on free market economic teachings. In addition, Mises explains the futility and counterproductiveness of government attempts to equalize all people's circumstances. 
Uh, quote, men are born unequal and it is precisely their inequality that generates social cooperation and civilization, end quote. Fascinating. So, Human Action in four volumes. It's volume two. Um, they all have the same description on the back, so it's just broken down so that you're not so overwhelmed. And as an added benefit to my learning, <laughs> I had actually purchased this directly from the, the uh, Mises Institute bookstore. Uh, this is Human Action Study Guide by Robert P. Murphy, a guided tutorial of Ludwig von Mises' classic work. Now, someone please tell me if I'm saying it right. <laughs> now I'm wondering, is it Mises or Mises? By von My Mises. I'm sure David or someone else will tell me. Um, anyway, it's a neat little, it was $15, and I just thought if I was going to try to do this on my own, at first I was going to do this on my own. And then John indicated he would like to try it because he is a uh, physics and philosophy major. <laughs> uh, so he loves this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so it's got like chapter summaries, the revolt against reason. Woo! It has some questions, why it matters. Um, anyway, so this will go along with this study along with what I'm going to learn from, just feedback from John and David, hopefully. We're going to um, try to do this. You know, I know, I know that uh, David said he was wanting to reread this sometime this year. Now's the time. Now's the time to be bold and brave. Whew. I'm talking to myself, trying to pump myself up for this. Um, okay, guys, so that concludes the Liberty Fund books that I have thus far. Thus far. Um, I can't recommend these enough if you are interested in learning more about history, the history of political thought, economics, um, philosophy in general. Um, check out their catalog. They are now breaking out. The Liberty Fund just recently sent an email saying that they have they've created separate subject catalogs so that you don't have to, you know, try to flip through a hundred pages of all this, you know, if you're only interested in history, they've got a limited um, PDF catalog you can browse. If you're only interested in economics, they have that. So um, they're affordable, they're beautiful, they're, they're built and printed to last, and I'm looking forward to adding these to my bookshelves uh, this weekend. So for that, um, for that, I guess that is all I have to say. <laughs> I need to go feed some dogs now. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Um, thanks for commenting. I look forward to hearing any of your thoughts below. And uh, thanks to um, all my new subscribers and everyone who's been with me thus far on this journey. Uh, I look forward to making some more this weekend. I've got some book tags to catch up on. And a wrap-up, maybe an April wrap-up or a beginning of the month, month of May TBR. Lots of things to talk about. All right, guys, until then, happy reading. Take care, be safe, be well. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.